In this episode of John's Arcade, we're gonna do something kind of different. We're gonna do a John's Arcade on the road. We're gonna to go to New York City and we're gonna visit the Nintendo World Store. Yeah, the Nintendo Store, guys. And then we're gonna come back to the basement and do viewer mail. All right, guys, let's get on with the show. <laughs> Hey guys, we are in the basement and today we're gonna do a John's Arcade on the road. That is right guys, and guess what? Well, this one's gonna be a little different. That's right, you know why? Because there's not gonna be really a lot of arcade stuff going on in this on the road video, but I'm okay with that because there's gonna be a lot of video game stuff because as you guys know, I'm a big Nintendo guy, I really am. I love freaking Nintendo. I've always loved Nintendo. They've been my favorite like since I've been a kid. You all know my favorite arcade game of all time is Donkey Kong. I am a Nintendo guy. And in this video, we're gonna go down to New York City. That's right, New York City. We're gonna go to Manhattan, and then we're gonna go to Rockefeller Plaza, where they have the Nintendo World Store. Do you guys know about this place, the Nintendo World Store? And we're gonna go down there because the new 3DS is out and I have to have it. I have to get the new 3DS. So in this video, we're gonna go down to New York, go to Rockefeller Plaza, go to the Nintendo World Store. We're gonna try to get the new 3DS. We're gonna do a complete walkthrough of the place. I'm gonna show you guys everything at the Nintendo World Store. I think you guys are gonna really like it. It's a cool place. They've got like every toy and plush and, and console and game and t-shirt and and bed bedding and, and blankets and pillows and it's crazy. It's all Nintendo all the time. It's basically like the Apple store, but with Nintendo stuff. So we're gonna go there, try to get the 3DS, do a walkthrough, and then afterwards, maybe we'll check out some sites. You guys wanna go do a little sightseeing, maybe visit some other stores near Rockefeller Plaza. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. So anyway, enough of that. Let's hop in the car, let's get on a train, hop on a cab, hop in a cab, and let's go to the Nintendo World Store in New York City. All right, guys, let's go. All right guys, we're at uh, Rockefeller Center here and uh, we're at the Nintendo store which is right here. And my hope is, well my hope is to get a Majora's Mask uh, 3DS XL. If anything, we'll do a little walkthrough of this place. Hopefully they don't shut me down with my camera. So I gotta kinda play it kinda cool in here. Um, but this is it guys, this is the Nintendo World store. Let's see what's going on over here. New 3DS's. It's the Monster Hunter edition. I better leave here with the 3DS. Here's the Amiibo. Is anything special? Okay, that's awesome. The KK slider. <laughs> Pikmin stuff. Kirby. Some coloring books. Oh, Super Mario series for guitar, that's awesome. Spirit tracks for piano, the Zelda uh, anime novels, which by the way, read from back to front. You guys didn't know that. Bunch of 3DS stuff. What is this, feline hat? All right, so this is the downstairs and they've got a bunch of 2DSs set up here. And a bunch of clothes. I really hope I don't, the guy was kind of looking at me there for a second. So we gotta do this quick and get out of here. I like the Pikmin crossing shirt. <laughs> Link, Dr. Mario shirt, Zelda Monopoly. 
bunch of links, a bunch of Zelda hats. All right, let's go upstairs. Zelda posters. It's a cool Donkey Kong. <laughs> That's awesome. So this place is pretty cool, man. So what's up here? There's some cool stuff over here. They have like some historical stuff. Almost like a little museum. Let's check that out. Some Game & Watch stuff. So before they did like the Game Boy, they were doing these little handhelds, LCD. I've got a couple of those. Game Boy and the Game Boy printer. There's Donkey Kong Hockey. Game Boy Color. Game Boy Pocket. Game Boy Light. The Astro Boy Edition. Game Boy Advance. That thing sucked because it wasn't backlit. There's the SP. That's the Famicom Edition. It's cool. The SP was great, actually. Here's one that was damaged in the Gulf War, it says. Isn't that cool? So it says, Game Boy damage in Gulf War. This Game Boy was damaged when barracks were bombed during the 1990-91 Gulf War. It still works. It's all melted. Game Boy Micro. I had that. That thing was actually really good. Here's the original DS. That thing kind of sucked with the little thumb. Remember that little thumb thing you had on the screen to play like Super Mario 3D? The DS Lite. The DS Lite, more DSi XL, the DSi, and then here's the current version, 3DS XL, I, I guess, and the 2DS. Well, I've had like pretty much every version of the of the DS and Game Boy. So here's some stuff here. Oh, look at that, Ganondorf. Oh, that's cool. What is that? A Wind Waker edition with a Ganondorf figure? That's badass. It's like a Skyward Sword link. I didn't want to buy that game. Some more Zelda stuff. I actually had that little shield thing right there. That is badass, that Ganon. Look at how cool that is. Link's crossbow training. I have that. That was kind of lame. Zelda wallet, uh, Link Figma, little figure. That was the uh, the Link Between Two Worlds Special Edition 3DS XL. Here's a bunch of stuff. Minish Cap. That was actually a pretty good game. Actually, I did like Minish Cap. That was a great uh, Game Boy Advance game. And look at these little figures. The Goron. Is that Errol? What was her name? That girl, that little pirate girl. She was cool. Zelda Monopoly, Clucker's Puzzle. Oh, that's cool. Limited Edition Game Boy Advance SP, Zelda Edition, signed by Miyamoto. So it looks like they're all Zelda crazy right now with the release of Majora's Mask. So that Skull Kid, man, I need to get that thing. That thing's awesome. We're gonna try to get that. I really doubt I'm gonna pull it off. And I also want this right here, the Majora's uh, Mask Edition. Oh, that is so cool. What was that character's name? Midna? Um, that was uh, Twilight Princess. I actually really like that game. That is so cool. Wind Waker is probably my favorite Zelda. I think my second favorite is, is Twilight Princess. I just thoroughly enjoyed it. Some cool stuff up here. So maybe I can get some like exclusive toys too. That'd be kind of cool. There's an old Nintendo Power. I probably got that issue when I was younger. I have no idea what year that came out. Oh yeah, I had all these guides too. I, I still had the Ocarina one. It was cool because uh, Nintendo Power, back in the day, if you subscribed, they would do a promotion. Like if you subscribed, you'd get a player's guide, your choice. And I, I got that uh, Ocarina one, one year. The NES stuff here and Super Nintendo. Wow. 
So I definitely had that Nintendo Power issue with Zelda 2 on it. So that's cool. It's like a little mini museum of memorabilia. So let's go check out the toys here. So they got Sonic, Boom. I, was this the game I just heard on the news was like the worst selling Sonic game ever? <laughs> so Nintendo supporting Sega here. Some uh, Mario Twin Sheet sets. Should I get those? <laughs> I don't think so. And, and were these pajamas? So we've got uh, some Kinects, like kind of like Legos, little kits. You know, I've really slowed down buying this stuff. I used to buy all this stuff. Every time I'd see a Mario thing, I would buy it. Not anymore. Oh, that's badass. Look at that, dude. Dude, if I had a young kid, I would absolutely buy that Mario Kart right on toy. $100, $199. How awesome is that? <laughs> that is so cool. Look at that thing. That's awesome. Some more Kinect stuff. All right, so what's over here? More shirts. So they've got a bunch of stuff that you don't normally see, like at, you know, Target or Walmart. Some big plushes, some booze and Bullet Bob. More t-shirts. Let's see. Okay, these are kind of cool. World of Nintendo figures. Anything good? Luigi, Donkey Kong, and Diddy. Actually, I think I've seen those at Toys R Us, those World Nintendo figures. Here's a big RC, Donkey Kong RC car. It's kind of cool. Some Mario lunch boxes. Some plushies. This is funny. <laughs> the little cactus guys from Mario. I like that. Actually, a lot. <laughs> wow, Luigi. Little octopus character. Oh, I love these things. Uh, the, these guys were in, uh, what was, what game were they in? Were they in Super Mario 3D World? I don't remember which, I like these little characters. That's cool. Oh. The mole. Some cute stuff here. Tanuki Mario. Oh wow, dude, that, that's super cute. <laughs> that's cool too. Some Pokemon stuff, lots of Pokemon. Okay, that is, that's mega cute. Snowman Pikachu. <laughs> All right, I like that. I'm too old for this stuff. <laughs> bunch of Pokemon. You guys want to see the Pokemon stuff? All right, let's... So, Valentine's Day Pikachus. <clears throat> Big Pikachu on a Pokeball. Admittedly, I don't know all the names of these Pokemon characters. All right, let's kind of go over here. So they have little kiosks you can play the Wii U and stuff. People are playing Mario Kart. Um, Kind of walk through here. People playing Smash Brothers and uh, Mario Kart. Oh, what game is that? Is that Splatoon? Well, that's just a video demo, isn't it? Some accessories, Wii U games, Watch Dogs finally out on Wii U, Captain Toad. Any good amiibos here that I can't get anywhere else? Not really. Let's just kind of take a look here. Pretty cool, right? People playing Smash Brothers over here. So that's it. I mean, we've kind of seen mostly everything. I'm going to find out if I can get a 3DS. They're probably going to laugh at me if I ask for a Majora's Mask one. <laughs> I think they sold out uh, at midnight last night because I'm here on the day that it, it came out but they did a midnight launch and right now it's like six o'clock so they probably sold out like 18 hours ago 
All right, let's go back downstairs. So that's the whole upstairs. What do you guys think? Pretty cool? Let's go down here, and then I'm going to... I don't know if I'm going to film when I uh, talk to the people. They probably won't like that. I really need this. I want all of this right here. All right, let's go try our luck here. All right, so I'm going to get in line. I'm probably going to turn the camera off. And I'm going to see what's possible here. All right, I, I just talked to the guy, and uh, they're sold out completely <laughs> of all new 3DSs. So John is not getting one today, which really sucks. So the 3D is pretty good actually. It's absolutely following my head. I'm going left and right. God damn it. So here's a little nub stick, by the way. And boy, it doesn't even feel like it moves. Huh. So the guy told me they were getting maybe black and red in tomorrow. And he, they were not getting any more Majora's Masks one. Do I really want? Should I hold out? That's blue. All right, let's see if we can make something happen here. It's kind of hard to tell the feel of it because it's in like the security thing. Graphics look pretty decent. I actually really like Majora's Mask. I think I like it more in Ocarina. Boy, it's a long ramp up here. All right, guys, I think that's it. We're going to sit there for like 10 minutes waiting for that game to start. <laughs> Codename Steam, I really want that too. All right, guys, I think, I guess we're done here. <laughs> it was a failed trip. We didn't get anything. <laughs> oh, man, I, I knew they were going to be sold out. What did you guys think of that, by the way? Nintendo World Store. I remember the first time I came here, I, I just was like in awe of the place. And... Uh, it feels like since this place opened, a lot of this stuff you'll see at Target and Walmart. I mean, they still have some stuff that you can't find elsewhere, but it is definitely cool that Nintendo has done this because uh, when I come to New York, I do try to pop in here. I don't tend to buy stuff much anymore. In the beginning, I was buying all kinds of crap, but I've got so much Mario and Luigi stuff in my house. It's gotten to the point where I just I need to stop <laughs> buying little figurines and uh because they're always just the same so anyway guys i hope you guys like that little nintendo world tour store tour and by the way i'm using the lavalier now so i'm wireless uh, i was curious i'm curious to see how that sounds in there and also curious how you guys what you guys think of it um so over here uh, this is actually kind of famous Do you guys want to see this so this is like the little ice skating rink uh down here and this is where they'll put the, the big Christmas tree and all that. This is Rockefeller. Uh, like Radio City Music Hall is over here. The Today Show is shot down there. Um, down here is the ice skating rink. I'll show you guys that. You guys want to do a little sightseeing? So that's the little ice skating rink at Rockefeller. And then I'll show you guys Radio City Music Hall. See if I can get my bearings here. All right, so that's NBC News. That's where the Today Show is shot right there on that corner. And then Radio City should be right over here. I think. Where am I? <laughs> There's the Lego. Wanna go in the Lego shop? Do you guys wanna do this? 
<laughs> I could take you in there if you want. I mean, I know this is not arcade, but I don't really care. It's just kind of fun, right? <laughs> All right, let's go in the Lego shop. Let's see what's going on in there. I think we could do that. It is so freaking cold right now, by the way. It's like like three degrees out here. Oh, there's Radio City right there. So that's Radio City. And uh, there's the NBC Studios Rainbow Room. That's where they shoot like SNL and all that. Um, so let's go in the Lego store. We'll check this out. Hopefully they don't freak out because I have my camera. Daniel, it was nice to have it. You wouldn't have All right, let's go in here. I'm not exactly a big Lego collector. I definitely, when I was a kid though, holy cow, Legos were like the greatest thing possible. So, all right, this is the Lego store. They got Star Wars stuff here in the window. Let's just kind of do a quick walkthrough. I'm just kind of keeping my camera low. So Lego movie stuff. Let's go down here. So you can buy, I guess, bulk bricks. Is that true? That's cool. Oh yeah, you can. They have a little, they have a cup you can fill up with bricks. That's pretty awesome. So you can see this is a massive wall of Legos. <laughs> and you can fill your little cup up with them. This is pretty cool. Build your own minifigure. Three figures for $10. And they have little parts. Oops, sorry. There's a Death Star. Here's some of the cool creator stuff. Lord of the Rings. Here's a pastrami sandwich. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> I actually like that. Pastrami sandwich and a Coke made out of Legos. Here's a rock concert. It's pretty awesome. Let's see what's over here. This looks like this is some kind of riot. <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. I think that's supposed to be Times Square, maybe. I'm not sure. Is that the entrance to the subway on Times Square? I think it is. Oh, this is badass. Look at that. Batmobile made out of Legos. $220 for that model. Let's go over here. That's cool. All right, let's kind of take a poke over here. So I'm holding my camera low, just so I don't uh, get too much attention while I'm doing this. And uh, if I was at an arcade right now, I'd be filming a lot of coin doors. <laughs> Minecraft. Wow, this is badass, look at this. They did the entire Rockefeller Plaza out of Legos. That is so cool. It's funny, to me, with, with all the little people out here, it looks like a riot. <laughs> That's all I see. <laughs> looks like they're about to burn the city down, these little characters. Look at it. They're like escaping from the zombie apocalypse on the roof. <laughs> it doesn't look good. <laughs> it's pretty badass, though. All right, what's over here? We got a bunch of Disney princess stuff, if that's your bag. Some basketball players, some flags. So, I think that's gonna do it. All right, guys, uh, I think we're done. So, uh, well, I, I hope you enjoyed the the tour through uh, Nintendo World and the Lego store. That's kind of fun, right? <laughs> it's a nice night here in New York City. Just come down here and see what's going on. Then we'll go back to the basement.
I've actually never been down here this close to the uh, ice skating rink. It's pretty cool, actually. Wow. Kind of dig it. I like that. They have all the trees with the lights on and the flags. Wow, it's pretty awesome. All right, guys, we're done. Uh, hope you enjoyed that. But why don't we go back to the basement? All right, guys, let's get out of here. All right, guys, it's actually the next day here, and I came back because uh, the guy told me they were going to get some more 3DSs um, on Saturday. And so I came back here. It's about almost 9 o'clock. And, uh, well, mission accomplished. We got it. So I, I had to get the black one. They had black and red. I decided to grab black. What do you think? Good choice? So pretty psyched, actually. And, of course, I had to get Majora's Mask. And they gave me a cool link bag. So anyway, guys, all right, let's go back to the basement. there you have it that was well the nintendo world store and the lego store what do you guys think of that what do you what do you think about john sneaking in a non-arcade video i think we could do that i think we're allowed to do that every now and then so i hope you guys enjoyed it and yes i did end up getting the 3ds the new 3ds and i i gotta say i really do dig it it's it's actually fantastic because i had the original 3ds the, the, the OG one, and I was always holding out, Not I didn't want to buy the, the 3DS XL, I wanted it, but I, I figured I should wait, and I, I'm glad I did, because this one is so much better than the old school one. The 3D, the 3D is what's really good, the, th the head tracking, like the 3D is very immersive, so yeah, I, I totally recommend this guy, and uh, I haven't done a full transfer yet, I'm waiting for the uh, micro SD card to come. Because this only comes with a 4 gig micro SD. And uh, so basically all I've done so far is played Majora's Mask. And it's fantastic, by the way. It's really good. It, Majora's Mask is probably one of my favorite Zelda games. I think my favorite Zelda game is Wind Waker. And I think my second favorite is Twilight Princess. And I think my third favorite is Majora's Mask. I actually like Majora's Mask more than Ocarina of Time, which probably is a sin or something to some of you guys out there. But I think Majora's Mask is cool. And playing it on this new system is just really, really badass. So, um, yes, I recommend this. It was $1.99, which is a little steep, but it is bigger. The screens are a lot bigger. The 3D is much better. They added this analog stick right here, which is surprisingly really good. This analog stick, the right one. Because uh, when you're playing Majora's Mask, you can control the camera with the uh, right analog stick. It's fantastic. So... Yeah, this gets my endorsement. I, I, I love it. So anyway, that was our little trip to New York. I hope you guys liked it. I'd love to hear what you guys thought of it. Because listen, I'm, I, I might do more stuff like this where we just go to video game type places, not necessarily arcade. I'll tell you the truth. I was in New York City and I was going to go to Barcade. I was going to do a walkthrough of Barcade. And I actually talked myself out of it. I'm like, God, man, you, you just did one up. You did one up. Uh, you did two one up videos. You, you, we went to hyperspace, which was kind of like a bark. I kind of felt like we've done a lot of those lately. So I decided not to go to Barcade. I thought instead, let's do a video at Nintendo World Store, which is totally different and fresh because we've done so many arcade and barcade walkthroughs. I'm not saying I'm going to stop doing those. I'm not at all. But I just feel like I felt like we kind of did a bunch of those recently. So I thought this would be a nice refreshing change and I hope you guys enjoyed it because I did I, I love going to that place it's great so anyway 
we're gonna do some viewer mail in this video. Uh, I printed out a few here, and uh, let's just let's just dive in. So if you guys want to participate in the viewer mail, you need to email them to me at blkdog7 at gmail.com, blkdog, the number seven at gmail.com. In the subject line, please put viewer mail, and please send them, because I will read them. So send them, send them, send them. BLK, DOG7 at gmail.com, which is BlackDog7. All right, so the first one here is from Pear Guy, uh, actually Nathan. Uh, hey, John, we are in the viewer mail. Had to do that. Anyway, hey, John, this is Nathan from Omaha, Nebraska, and I just, just wanted to say that I am a huge fan. I've been a fan from just before the Time Pilot Restore and have been hooked ever since. Well, thank you, Nathan. I have been in the hobby for a few years when I first saw the King of Kong and wanted the Donkey Kong. Me too. Uh, then I found one on Craigslist and have had it ever since. As a 15-year-old arcade collector, all I want to say is that I think you, I want to thank you for allowing me to dive into this crazy hobby that I will always be a part collector, that I will always be a part of for the rest of my life. I also have a few questions. Number one, as a frequent listener to your podcast, Arcade Outsiders, I went to download the episodes on iTunes and found that you only have the last 12 or so episodes available for download. I know that you have them all for listening on the website, but I want to download them. So my question is this, is there a way to download all of the previous episodes? Question two, is there any life advice that you would give someone that is still in high school? Question three, what is the worst game that you've ever owned or played? Uh, thanks for reading this in the viewer mail section, and again, thank you for inspiring me to get into collecting and all the on all of your videos for support. Nathan, P.S. I am also on YouTube. Just search for N O V A S five one eight nine. That's novice N O V A S five one eight nine. Thanks again, John. All right, so let's answer his questions here. All right, so number one, Arcade Outsiders. Yeah, I know the RSS feed for Arcade Outsiders is being automatically generated by Tumblr, okay? And that is completely different than how I've done it for Video Game Outsiders, because Video Game Outsiders, I actually hand code that feed every week. I open up I open up the RSS feed in Text Wrangler on my Mac, and I manually update the feed, and then I upload it to my server. So that RSS feed has all 400 plus episodes of Video Game Outsiders. Now, when I started Arcade Outsiders, I decided to go a different, more automated route, okay? Because when we started Video Game Outsiders, that was over, that was 10 years ago, and blogs and, and WordPress didn't really have uh, uh, podcast support yet. So I didn't do it that way for VGO. But Arcade Outsiders, when we started that, I'm like, well, now I should take advantage of these modern blog softwares and let them generate the RSS for me. That way I don't have to hand code the Arcade Outsiders. So I'm using Tumblr. I didn't realize though, at the time when I switched to Tumblr for Arcade Outsiders, that it only showed like the last 20 episodes in the RSS feed, which is super lame. I look for a solution. I couldn't find one. So right now, that's the way it is. I am aware of it, okay? And I need to do something about it because I don't like it either. All of our episodes need to be in the RSS feed. You guys should not have to go to ArcadeOutsiders.com and manually download each MP3. You should be able to just subscribe and see every podcast in on your iPhone or iPod, wherever it is that you listen to the podcast. So I don't have a solution right now. If you guys know some clever way of getting all of the episodes off the Tumblr page at ArcadeOutsiders.com into one RSS feed, I'd love to know it. I researched it. I found some kludgy ways of doing it. I, I, I couldn't get it to work. So let me know. Uh, any life advice that I would give someone in high school? Now, you're saying you want me, John, to give you life advice? <laughs> Not arcade advice? Some life... Okay, so life advice. Well, listen, Nathan, you, you need you need to take ownership. You need to be a hard worker. I believe in that, okay? You should get a job now. You're 15, start working, okay? I got my first job when I was 15, and I've been working ever since. I, I, I have never not been employed ever since I've been 15. The day I turned 15, I got a job, and I've been working nonstop. So I, I want you to get a job now. It's going to give you people skills. It's going to allow you to talk. It's, it's good for you. Get, get a job in retail. Work at a restaurant. Interface with people. Talk to people. Very important skill. So that would be my advice. And also, I wouldn't worry too much about the kids in high school because you're not going to know any of them. None of them. When you, when you are older, when you're my age, 
Those people in high school that, that matter to you so much right now are gonna be so far out of your life that you're gonna realize, man, why did I really care about what that guy thought of me or whatever? So there, there's some John uh, ownership, get a job and don't worry about the tools at your high school. <laughs> Because <laughs> they're, they're going to be off your radar. Just trust me. In 10 years, you won't even know who any of them are. All right. Number three. John's giving life advice now. <laughs> what is the worst game that you have ever owned or played? Well, you know what? One comes to mind, and it's probably a controversial one to say. But Theater of Magic was the, was the game that I was so excited to get and was so excited to get rid of. Theater of Magic sucked. That was not a good pinball machine for me. It was very shallow. It was too expensive. So that was uh, that was the one for me. Uh, I don't know what the worst game ever is that I've played. I, I've played some really bad games. There's some really horrible games out there. So I don't know. Pop open up Mame. You'll find them quick. The one that comes to mind recently was that game we played at Scoots. That vector game. That thing was garbage. <laughs> <laughs> what game is that? I, I didn't like that game. Anyway, all right, Nathan. Thanks for watching, pal. All right, let's go on here. And uh, do, 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 do. Uh, this one is from Tony. It says, hey, John, I want to help a friend whose pinball is having some paint wear issues on his back glass, okay? Is the name of the spray you recommended called Triple Thick? I heard you mention it in one or, one or more restore videos you used on the Marquise. Thanks, Tony. Yes, Tony. Triple thick is what you can use because these gla when the Marquise are glass, over time, the paints, the ink, starts flaking off of them, especially if they're in the cold. Don't, don't ever store glass Marquise or back glasses or bezels in the garage. Just don't do that. Because especially if you live in, in you know, a, a, an environment where it gets really cold in the winter, because the, the glass, the ink will flake off of this in the winter. So that, just don't ever do that. But anyway, so the ink on these eventually lets loose of the, from the glass and you'll start getting flaking on the glass marquees and bezels and back glasses. So a way to prevent that and preserve the ink is to spray something on the back of it called triple thick, okay? Now I did this in my Pac-Man Restore video because uh, I had a hard time finding a nice Pac-Man uh, cabaret marquee because it has incandescent bulbs behind it, and those bulbs over time will start eating through that ink. Uh, Zookeeper, same way. Um, the old, the Taito games all have incandescent bulbs up here instead of fluorescent. And so on a lot of Taito games like Zookeeper and Frontline and Jungle King, you'll see that the marquees are flaking because the incandescent bulbs just essentially burn up the ink. And the cabaret was the same way. And uh, so I didn't want to risk having the ink flake, so I sprayed the back of it with triple thick. Now triple thick, is a clear coat spray, okay? You can use it on, on back glass for pinball. You can use it on glass marquees, plexi marquees. The, the Pac-Man marquee was, was, was plexi, it was plastic. You can buy this at Walmart. That's what it looks like, okay? It's $3.67 a can. It's called Krylon Triple Thick Crystal Clear Glaze. You can get it at Walmart. It's not hard to find. Um, now with pinball back glass, uh, if it's an if it's an old school game that has cutouts, okay, for the displays, you got to think about that. You know, you could you could probably just spray right over that, but you might see some of that through, uh, you know, because the old pinball machines, the back glass had holes in it to show the score, right? Un unlike the newer ones, which don't have that. They just have a DMD on the bottom that shows the score. So you might want to mask off where the holes are so you don't see that triple thick, because you can kind of see it a little bit. And I would just put some masking tape over that. Uh, but yeah, triple thick, that's the stuff. All right, uh, this one is from Cosmic Vector. Uh, hi John, Cosmic Vector here from the UK. I was watching your latest show with my girlfriend, <coughs> excuse me, who happens to show a small interest in the games and mentioned that she loved the way the John's Arcade logo brand looked, saying how cool it was. Well, thanks. This made me think of John's Arcade merchandise in the form of t-shirts. I don't know as to whether you have already thought of producing t-shirts or maybe have already, but I for one would gladly purchase and support your channel by buying one. My idea for logo placement would have to be on the front 
Uh, the John's Arcade logo on the back between the shoulders. Maybe, hey guys, we're in the basement. What do you think, John? Really looking forward to the Quantum Restore, a vector game I know very little about. Yeah, I know. I gotta make shirts. I, I, I've been asked a lot about shirts, and I, you know, quite frankly, it's it's just a time thing. And what I think I want to do is on the front have the John's Arcade logo for you know full color, and then on the back, my buddy Scoots made this, just in one color. It says, "Hey guys, we're in the basement. Would you guys would you guys buy that shirt? I need to get off my butt and make some of these." It's just a t you know I'm just bad at sending stuff through the mail too. It's like, yeah, I want to make shirts, but then I gotta ship them out. I gotta go to the post office every week. It's just. I don't, Honestly, I don't have a lot of time to do this kind of stuff. I, you know, I, I'm doing like three, two podcasts, and vi two videos a week. I, I'm maxed out, man. I, I'm writing songs and making apps uh, at night, I, so I need to fit this into my life somehow. And, uh, but I should get T-shirts made. And if you guys would buy them, I'll make them. So we'll see. Let me know if you guys want T-shirts. And, and do you like the idea of the John's Arcade logo on the front, and then this on the back? Should the, should the shirt be blue or black? What do you think? I think blue would be cool. A blue t-shirt with the John's Arcade logo and then this in the back maybe in white with white uh, ink instead of black. So let me know what you guys think. Um, let's see, what else should we read here? Uh, this next one's from Dan. It says, hey John, uh, Thanks so much for answering my viewer mail in the last episode. Another great one. To answer your question on the, on the number of shows a week, I think two shows a week is good. It keeps us coming back for more. The new mic is great too. Sound is great. By the way, I, a, a lot of you guys responded to the last episode saying that two shows is good. Two shows a week is ideal. Three would be okay too, but it seemed like more people were saying two a week, so let's let's stick with that. And then every now and then I'll, I'll squeak out a third one, maybe a, a John's Let's Play Quest 4 video or something. So um, he says he has an idea for an episode. You mentioned in the last one that you have a lot of experience with monitors. Ah, those monitors with all the warning stickers and high voltage. I am always concerned with the monitors when working on my games and have luckily not had to touch one yet. I know you have done shows on discharging monitors and have touched on them there, but I think you could dedicate the entire show just on monitors from soup to nuts. That would be extremely helpful to me and I'm sure many others, if you could just help with this and what I will call the mystery of them, and with all the danger stickers on them, that would be awesome from discharging, removing, replacing kits, adjusting the screens, anything you could talk about and show everyone how to repair, maintain them would be awesome. Appreciate it, Dan. Now, Dan, I've done this. I have done this kind of stuff, okay? But they've been in the restore videos, mostly. So, like, in the Journey Restore, we rebuilt that monitor. I did it in an episode. We adjusted the monitor that was in one of the restore videos. So I've, I've really covered this stuff. Uh, in the Gyrus Restore, we capped the monitor. I, I did a whole cap job in, in that. I've done a 6100 rebuild video, an entire video on rebuilding a 6100 monitor. So if you feel there's any sp specific gaps we might have that I'm not aware of, tell me. But I, I feel like we've covered monitors pretty thoroughly. Now we haven't, uh, we have not done a Sanyo 20 EZ cap job. That's that's a weak spot right now. That I know. But I, I know we've done a G07, we've done a 4900, we've done a 6100, and we're about to do a K7500 with a 720. So that's coming next. But if I've missed something, if I need to cover something with monitors, let me know. But we certainly have discharged uh, plenty of monitors in these videos, and we've worked on them, we've adjusted them, we replaced caps and all that stuff. All right, viewer mail from last one here from Nate. Uh, John, this idea of turning off free play on all your games and using custom John's Arcade tokens to coin up has my wheels turning. How about looking into getting an antique change machine? Then customize it to not only kick out your custom tokens, but to accept your custom John's Arcade paper money. Now that's kind of cool. Now you can make custom John's Arcade paper money, hand them out to your guests, and then they feed it into your change machine to receive custom John's Arcade tokens. Seems like a no brainer. Love the show, Nate from Milwaukee. You know, Nate, that's a cool idea because, you know, I, listen, I've thought many times about getting a change machine down here and I, I always go, God, uh, I got to redo all, I, I would have to redo every single mech down here. I'd have to adjust the dip switch settings on every single game. I don't know, man. It seems like a lot of work and kind of expensive to buy all those mechs. We'll see. We'll, we'll experiment with it. I would like to get some John's Arcade tokens made. That would be kind of cool. Maybe, maybe we'll do it. Maybe I'll get some tokens made first. And then I'll start slowly converting the games one by one to token. We might do that. I'll look into how expensive tokens are. Yeah, 
I'm actually starting to warm up to this idea. It's kind of cool. And then, you know, the paper money thing, that's pretty badass. If I could make like John's Arcade dollar bills with my face on it that you put in the change machine, <laughs> that'd be funny. So, I don't know. We'll see what happens. So, anyway, guys, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you've never subscribed to my little channel, go ahead and click subscribe. I release new videos on Sundays and sometimes, sometimes in between. So, if you've never subscribed, please do. And also, if you guys do want to support me, I had that support button on the homepage. Um, so if I've helped you out or, and you just want to kind of tip, think of it as a tip jar, right? You want to kick in some shekels, whatever, the support button's there. And any money that comes through there will be used to make this channel better. You know, I, I've actually been eyeing some new cameras. Very expensive ones, but uh, I don't know. I, I, I'm interested in stepping my game up even bigger with, with the cameras. So, But that might be a 2016 thing. We'll see. But I think the 60p has been looking pretty sharp here I'm, with my camera. So I don't think it looks bad, but I would love a, a camera that does really good in low light. So anyway, what else? Uh, I have two podcasts, Video Game Outsiders and Arcade Outsiders at VideoGameOutsiders and ArcadeOutsiders.com. You can find those on iTunes and Stitcher, or and we do them live on AllGames.com. So, all right, guys, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you guys really soon. I might have trouble getting a video out on Sunday. We'll see what happens, but I want the next video after this is 7:20. There's, there's no other way I can release a video other than that. So we're going to visit the 720, I think on Sunday. So that's the plan here. But I got a lot going on this week and my mom is visiting. <laughs> so I don't know if, I, if I'll be able to sneak away to make the video on Sunday. So anyway, guys, that's it. I'll see you later and later and bye. <laughs>